Are you sick of those damn political crusaders? The anti-libertarian libertarian party? Sick of the violence and coercion that makes up the status servile society with seemingly no escape? Are you looking for real practical solutions to increase your personal freedom and your invulnerability to coercion? If so, kick off your shoes, come inside the polyethylene A10, and let's talk Vanu. Join your hosts, Shane and Kyle, as they further explore this freedom strategy and develop it into the modern day. You're listening to the Vanu Podcast. Putting it on TVP. No, I haven't yet. You can. Yeah, okay, I will. And welcome to the Vonnie Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to coercion. I'm Shane and I'm Jason. Today's uh, today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook and 30 day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash Vonnie. There are obviously a bunch of great titles on there, but I'd recommend Going Mobile, a terrific Vanu uh, Vanu and Van Live scene from the 1960s, narrated by yours truly. It features some incredible articles by Rayo and tons of great insight from those living uh, those living Vanu back then. It's always great to hear. It's great to learn from uh, the self liberators of the past. Uh, again, that link is audibletrial.com forward slash Vanu. So, Jason, welcome back to the podcast, man. I feel like we just chatted a couple days ago. Uh, <laughs> what's what's new? Well, that's because that's because we did just chat a few days ago on a patreon exclusive episode um what's new is uh i'm a little enraged today i i I, you know i i didn't i had a good night i had i I was wasn't feeling good yesterday but i had a good night's sleep but then this morning i woke up and i saw an article out of santa barbara that people that give people straws can get up to six months in jail a thousand dollar fine and six months in jail for giving people strong. That's the same sentence they gave to Brock Turner for rape. Really? So, yes, they're like giving somebody a straw in the eyes of the state can can be equal to a rape conviction. That is and insane. Just, yeah. So I'm sitting here drinking water out of my blue bendy straw. Yeah. And uh I'm ready, really, really ready to get on with this episode. Yeah, yeah, I posted something about that uh, a week ago. I mean, it was, it, yeah, that that kind of that it didn't really piss me off. It's like it's 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 kind of that thing. It, it's it's where the state just becomes so absurd that you can't really do anything else but just laugh at it. Um, <laughs> I saw I saw a, a tweet last night too. It was uh, uh, like it was yeah San Francisco, and uh, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher it badly, but something on the lines of uh, hey uh, you know uh, hey uh, you know local city council I'm, I've you know walked past you know sir, I've walked I've stepped on a syringe on the way to work and I walked past feces. They're like all right, we hear you. We need to take action. And it's like we'll ban straws. And it's like uh, <laughs> so what? <laughs> no. What are you doing here? Oh, hold on, hold on. It gets better. San Francisco City Council recently passed an ordinance uh, where they're going to look into banning corporate cafeterias, like the, these these that large. Was, that corporations. was yes, that, that was that was the next step. It's like, uh, all right, well, we'll do this. Uh, we'll ban we'll ban cafeterias. Yeah, it's like well, you weren't yeah, even they, addressing the problems that your your constituents are. Yeah, which, they, that's not they, surprising, they, but they want to ban corporate corporate cor- corporate cafeterias because the surrounding businesses aren't getting enough. Patronage from the people that work Jesus at these Christ. corporate buildings. Oh yeah, you, you can't you can't make that up. You you honestly cannot make that up. Gosh. It's just oh, yeah. <sighs> yeah. It's it's frustrating, but uh, you know, as many ones we we really can't be surprised about uh, about that. But I guess we should go ahead and mention that uh, you know we uh, for for those on D Live, we are we are streaming. Uh, you know, we are live streaming this. Uh, typically. Uh, we just do podcasts, release them every Tuesday. So uh, as of, I guess, for the foreseeable future, as long as I'm on with uh, with Jason, uh, there's no reason not to live stream to DTube, DTube as well and uh, give you guys uh, early access. So you'll get a few days early access and um, 
yeah, if you want to, uh, you know, watch the video, it's a little more, a uh, little more engaging. And plus, you can always uh, drop comments and things, uh, questions, uh, all of that. Uh, we certainly do, uh, certainly do appreciate it. And plus, I mean, lo live streaming, you know, I I've wanted to get into this more, uh, but my my first choices were always fascist book and YouTube because I, I can typically I, I thought at least I could get more engagement there. But why the hell would I support this platform so I could support Steam it, uh, where I guess DLive, a uh, you know, a decentralized open source platform. It's kind of a kind of a no brainer, and plus can actually uh, you know I guess uh, have the potential to make a little money doing it. So uh, rather than just uh, you know feed the uh, feed the the big social media beasts. Uh, you know that these uh, these platforms are meant to, uh, I guess, kind of subvert, uh, in a sense. But uh, I guess uh, I'll go ahead and just make one plug real quick. Uh, my book, Bonnie Strategy for Self Liberation, uh, is available for pre-order now. I'm currently working on the audiobook, and uh, the Kindle version will be released August 8th. If you want to pick that up, just go to libertyunderattack.com forward slash Bonnie book. If you want to pre-order the Kindle version, uh, just go to tinyurl.com forward slash Vanu Kindle. So, uh, Jason, is there anything you want to talk about before we uh, get into this? Uh, I th I think I think one of the things that we need to cover is is the history of the of the Liberator pistol and and what it means. Um, I, I I took a little bit of time before the show, only about like you know five minutes before the show, but uh, actually uh, the on, Liberator on pistol. That, on that, let me introduce the show first, and then I'll just see if there are any other topics outside of today's. So let me introduce the show, and then I'll try. All right, okay, go ahead. That's right. yes, that's that's a great idea, though. It's a great idea. So today's podcast is number fifty one in the eighth installment of our Crypto Anarchism series. It is titled Manufacturing the Means of Self-Defense, 3D Printing, and Ghost Gunning. The show notes can be found by visiting vanupodcast.com forward slash 51. The subject of today's podcast couldn't be, uh, couldn't be timelier. The idea of 3D printing firearms and ghost gunning has been in the news often, mainly due to Cody Wilson's recent settlement with the Department of Justice, giving him full access to uh, you know, release as many CAD files as he possibly uh, wants to. Obviously, uh, Second Amendment folks mostly love it for obvious reasons. You know, Sands, maybe the political crusaders like uh, you know Glenn Beck, who uh, remember when Cody Wilson was on there, he was like, uh, you know, like this this might be too much, man. I mean, like like th this might be too much. So, uh, <laughs> so you can't, you can't have that much freedom. Exactly. So two A folks mostly love it. I'm not going to make a, a like a I guess a, a, a an all encompassing statement there because I'm sure there are some of those folks who uh, you know think that you know there should be some restrictions on freedom. But uh, you know anarchists love it because well the state lost and uh, unsurprisingly uh, the silly nannies against firearms and similar organizations think the next apocalypse is just around the corner. Although the most important thing in my opinion is the awareness that all of this brought. I was completely unaware, Jason, honestly, that manufacturing your own firearms was mostly 100% legal and that serial numbers are not required unless you're participating in commerce. Uh, obviously, depending, on, de depending upon your tax farm, California might have more stringent regulations on that. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, but obviously, don't take, uh, you know, go and, you know, consult uh, the uh, arbitrary dictates of those who falsely imagine themselves to be your rulers wherever you're located. Uh, people have been doing this for a long time, and uh, the ATF has known about it. So today we're going to tell you all about 3D printing and ghost gunning, how you can begin manufacturing your, uh, your own means of self-defense, what this means for Venuans, and how self-liberators self can use this incredible technology to make themselves more invulnerable uh, to coercion. So Jason, tell us a little bit about the, uh, the or actually, one other thing before, no, screw it, we'll, I'll, I'll do that in the next episode. Um, so yeah, tell us about the history of, uh, of the, the liber Liberator pistol. Okay, uh, the Liberator pistol is uh, called the FP45 Liberator. Uh, it's a pistol that was manufactured by the United States military during World War II for use by resistance forces in occupied territories. Uh, it's, it's, it's a single shot 45 uh, that um, guerrilla forces could use to, to sneak up on the occupying force, take the shot, put, their, put the occupier down, and steal their equipment. Like that, that was the entire point of it was it was a means to getting better equipment. Yeah, and, they, and, they, and were, they were supposed to be, you know, so cheap to manufacture they could just like airdrop them over, like from helicopters and onto the entire citizenry. As far as I remember, Cody Wilson explained that, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there was only they cost about two dollars and ten cents per unit. Um, five extra rounds of ammunition could be stored in the pistol grip. So theoretically, you could have you could have six six shots with this. Uh, short range, one to four yards. Maximum effective effective range was about twenty five feet. Um, so yeah, it, it was made by 300 workers in, in about 11 weeks. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah and that was, and that was the, the original history, right? I don't think Cody Wilson has 300 employees or ever had 300 employees. No, that no. this is the, the, the original history. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I, I really didn't, I, I guess probably before, 
I you know binge watched uh, a lot of Cody Wilson stuff again recently. I, I didn't really I didn't realize I thought the Liberator was just like this you know catchy name or I guess you know a quite applicable name, but no, there's actually there's actually some some interesting history behind it. And the, the way that Cody explained it was you know that that never really came into uh, came into fulfillment, and uh, he he thought you know let's. Let's go ahead and do that uh, here. Defense distributed. So, um, so yeah. I guess uh, any other preliminary notes before I, I get on to uh, definitions here? Uh, no, not really. I'm good to go. I think we should. Uh, yeah, definitions. All right. And uh, for for some folks, this might be just uh, you know common knowledge, but uh, it's it's best to start with definitions with anything. Uh, that's the the proper way to start a, a dialogue or discourse. So we're all on the same page. Uh, and so maybe some folks uh, aren't familiar with uh, with these concepts and ideas. So uh, let's go <laughs> no. ahead. And, uh, <laughs> so yeah, let's go ahead and, uh, and get uh, get these knocked out here. So 3D printing. Uh, and this is from the uh, Wikipedia article. 3D printing is any of various processes. Uh, in which material is joined or solidified under computer control to create a three-dimensional object with material being added together, such as liquid molecules or powder grains being fused together. 3D printing is used in both rapid prototyping and additive manufacturing. Objects can be of almost any shape or geometry and typically are produced using digital model data from a 3D model or another electro uh, electronic data source, such as an addi uh, additive manufacturing file, uh, usually in sequential layers. There are many different techniques, like uh, stereolithography or fused deposit modeling. Uh, thus, unlike material removed from a stock in the conventional machining process, 3D printing, or AM, uh, that's additive manufacturing, built a three-dimensional object from computer-aided design, uh, that's a CAD model, or AMF file, usually by successfully adding uh, material layer uh, by layer. So, a little bit of a mouthful here, but basically what we're talking about is just, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> I guess, uh, fusing, material, uh, fusing materials together, right? That's, that's basically all it is. Uh, yeah, it's it's instead of instead of removing uh, material from from it from a block of aluminum in, in traditional manufacturing, uh, it, it usually is uh, like airport aluminum or, or airplane aluminum, whatever it is, um, and they they remove material to a point that it becomes what they want it. Uh, in this case, you're actually starting with nothing, and you're 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 building material up. Uh, layer by layer, like um, like like a lasagna or or a sandwich, you're, you're building it up uh, in order to create exactly what you want. Um, it's it's a lot more it's a lot more materially material inf efficient. Um, the uh, the but it's 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 still it's still a relatively new technology, whereas the old way of of machining is uh, it's it's I mean that's been around since what the, the 1600s. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, and we'll get into uh, you know as we get into this episode, we'll we'll dive into I guess more uh, use cases for three D printing, but that's just a, an overall starting definition. Uh, now, ghost gunning. Uh, so a ghost gun is a firearm without a, without serial numbers, and ghost gunning is the manufacturing of a firearm. Uh, without uh, serial numbers. Uh, now, this has been around, uh, you know, even before Cody Wilson came out with the first Ghost Gunner. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know, has it always been called Ghost Gunning, or is that just, I, I guess, uh, a, a new, uh, I guess, a new, more attractive way to put that? Uh, I, I think it is. It is a more attractive way to put it. Um, I don't know who term who, who coined the term, but uh, uh, it, the term itself really became popular with uh, Kevin DeLeon. He's a uh, uh, politician here in California. Yes, um, I, I think that I think that might have been where where Cody drew that from because wasn't he the one that's like uh, this is a blow receiver, this is a firearm, it is a ghost gun. I think it, they used that in their promo video. Maybe uh, they took yeah, it from he, him. No, no, no. He he called it a. Uh, he said it it had a, uh, um, a a ghost gun with 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 a thirty caliber clip that can shoot thirty <laughs> calibers in thirty seconds or something like that. No, yo, what, 30, yeah, thirty rounds in a second. I think is. is I think. No, no, no. He he said he said thirty calibers. Thirty calibers. Jesus. Christ. Yeah. It's all. It's almost. Like, it's almost like these politicians, you know, trying to, uh, you know, describe Bitcoin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they have no idea what they're talking about. Like they 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 might no. need to hire some some better interns here so they don't sound like uh, uh, jackasses. <laughs> but. Um, yeah. Uh, anything else on? Uh, I guess the, the I guess uh, I guess the the foundation for 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 ghost gunning there or uh, last definition. Uh, well, okay. G ghost ghost gunning is different than a three D printed firearm. Uh, um, a, a ghost gun is a eighty percent lower. Uh, um, eighty percent lowers are, are completely legal, according to 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 the to the ATF and, and the United States government. And what it is, it's 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 an, it's a lower of a firearm that a, is only just a block of metal. Yeah. Well, it's it's not even just a block of metal. It's it's it has certain shapes and 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 uh, attributes to it 
but it, it's it needs 20% of its manufacturing in order to become an actual firearm. So, like you you can you I can buy here in California I can buy 80% lowers off the internet without a, a background check or anything like that, and then I myself have to remove the other 20% of the material, um, which is generally where the, the the trigger goes and the trigger slot, and then there's like a, a, a pinhole on the side. Um, and that's 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 an, that's actual like aluminum or or um, the, the 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 rubber plastic that that's used. Um, and that yeah, that's 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 different than 3D printing. Ghost ghost gunning is what um, the Cody Wilson's machine defense distributed. What that what that machine does is complete the 20% that is necessary for an 80% lower to, to become a, uh, an actual firearm. Right, right. Very good, uh, very that, good. Yeah, that's that's different than 3D printing. Yeah, yeah, and um, I mean, and yeah, those are completely legal to buy, um, and mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to register them, uh, no background check, at least generally speaking, nope. um, and that's, uh, that's yeah, pr pretty incredible. And like I said, uh, I was not aware. I think this was when, when we when we did that Patreon episode where I put with the teaser out, teaser uh, you know portion out. Um, that I I was unaware that this was has had had been done for a long time. Well, I knew it's been done, but I thought it was like illegal, uh, illegal or at least in a gray area. But no, like this is something that people have done for a long time, and you know as long as they aren't uh, you know engaging commercially, uh, there's there's really nothing uh, restricting it, which is surprising. So, you know with uh, with uh, I guess how anti-gun the culture is now uh i guess at least what the media portrays uh you'd think uh that's uh, they they'd pass some sort of regulation against that but uh thankfully thankfully not as of as of right now right uh as of right now no it is completely legal um there have been there have been bills on the books um feinstein of course has has posted a few and then uh chuck schumer he's scared to death of them along with um 3D printed firearms, you know, he's chicken little with that stuff. So they're working on it, you know, as, as the popularity grows, eventually they're going to have to get to a point where they, they try to suppress it. Yeah. Yeah. And I even saw, uh, just, uh, last week, I think, uh, like the Texas legislature, um, it wasn't, they weren't, it, it wasn't, um, you know, obviously the, the person that was live streaming it, you know, put a clickbaity title, like your life, liberty and property is, is at stake, but it was, it was, you know, some minuscule thing, but they still did meet, you know, to make sure that the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like for, uh, domestic abuse, uh, people who are, have been found guilty of violent, uh, domestic abuse and those sorts of folks, uh, you know, that the, the, re the restrictions were and the regulations were, uh, I guess, uh, were enough to prevent those folks from getting firearms, but um, oh, you're talking about red red flag. Yes, um, that's it. Yes, red flag. Yeah, yeah that's red it. red flag legislation. Yeah, which is just as dumb as as no no fly no buy, right? I mean, it's 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 completely arbitrary up to the edict of the state, saying, oh well, we think you're a threat. Well, you know, according to the DHS, you and I are threats. So right. do we deserve our firearms taken away? No. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I mean, it's so so yeah. I was about I was about to be really pissed, you know, if, if the Texas leg legislature is meeting on gun control right after I moved here, um, but no, it's it's <laughs> it's they're just you know making sure the red the red flag laws. That's yeah, that's what it was, uh, making sure the red flag flag laws were, were up to par. Uh, and I watched like thirty minutes of it, and I was like, yeah, this is a waste of time. But uh, anyways, uh, the last one here, CNC machining, uh, is the automation of machine tools by means of computers executing pre-programmed sequences of machine uh, controlled commands. Now this is before I guess the. Uh, well, I guess the the ghost gunner is basically just a, a CNC machine, right? Yes, it's 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 a small tabletop sized CNC machine uh, designed to do specific tasks. Gotcha, gotcha. And I guess the more traditional route without without that, I mean, it'd, it'd be using drill presses. And um, I mean, what 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 sort of uh, tools and and what sort of tools would you need to actually, uh, I guess, for the non desktop version? For the, for uh, definitely drill presses, uh, files, lathes. Um, I, I, I've seen people complete 20% lowers with a Dremel tool. Um, it, it's, it's not hard to manufacture a firearm, um, but you can, you, you can do it with, with an 80% lower on a, on a ghost gunner, or you could go the traditional route and get a, get a block of aluminum or, or a, a block of the, the, um, the, the poly composite that they use. And, and completely mill it out yourself. You, you can get the plans online, like the specifics, which are the things that, that Cody Wilson is going to be um, on the first. 
uh, posting. But you can get those plans online right now and, and take those and, and go create your, your own firearm using traditional traditional machining tools. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, let, so let's go ahead and get into uh, 3D printing more generally here. So obviously, uh, I guess it was probably was 2013 or thereabouts when uh, when when Cody you know successfully printed and fired a uh, the 3D Liberator pistol. Uh, and we talked about that. We <laughs> talked about the the history of that. And uh, I, I guess the, the 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 point here, and this is a, a question that was brought up uh, by someone on Steemit. Um, they said, uh, you know, I, I thought this was like you know kind of a one and done thing. Uh, have they pr made it? Have they progressed it to a point where you know this could be like a I guess a successful means of self defense? And the answer is, uh, at least the, the way that I see it, Jason, the Liberator pistol was more symbolic than actual, actually practical, right? Um, I, I don't remember exactly, but um, I mean, I, I think th I think the most rounds they're able to push through in like maybe a handful or dozen, um, hand a handful or dozen a dozen of rounds um, before it you know malfunctioned or exploded or whatever. Um, but I, 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 as, as far as I understand it, these would not be uh, you know like if you're carrying a firearm for self defense, this might not be a <laughs> might not be the best route to go, right? Oh hell no. No 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 no. Not not the best at all. Um on uh on uh the that that ep that podcast that you sent me, uh, Trigger Time, uh with Michael Malice and Cody Wilson. You know, Cody himself said that he took the when 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 he got the Liberator pistol when it when it was complete and, and assembled and he went out and he fired one shot. One shot. And then posted and posted the video and all that good stuff and, and that was that was that was the big moment that was that was the big the big end of the gun debate, mm -hmm. um, and he himself in the article says he's he's only fired it a few times. A few times, okay. Um, the engineer, the guy that designed it, has never actually fired it because he's scared to death of doing it. <laughs> right. So, uh, and. Uh, as as a means of self defense, like if it gets off one shot, you know sometimes that's all you need. But uh, uh, what if you need two or they're, three? <laughs> they're not nearly. Yeah, they they are not nearly as reliable as, as traditional made firearms, uh, or even eighty percent lowers uh, made into firearms. Like you could get a uh, an, an eighty percent Glock lower. Uh, you could also get an eighty percent nineteen eleven lower and and create you know create pistols out of those. And those those are far more reliable in, in terms of repetitive use than you can get out of a 3D printed pistol right now, or a 3D right. printed firearm parts at all. Uh, I follow my, my buddy Jeff Rodriguez over on, on YouTube. Uh, he does a lot of 3D print. Like he has a 3D printed shotgun, but it only works like six, seven out of ten times. Huh. Okay. You know, the, the 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 3D printed springs and 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 whatnot. They're they're not they're they're not at the point where it's 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 10 for 10 where it's 100 percent reliable. Um, gotcha. And I think in the Liberator pistol, I don't think the spring was even 3D printed. No, not no, not in the original. No. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, not not the most practical for self defense, or uh, you know, as as uh, you know, as is you know typically posited, like oh my gosh, a kid's gonna you know get a 3D printer, he's gonna spend you know, this this high schooler is going to drop a bunch of money on a 3D printer, and uh, he's going to 3D print, uh, you know, a Liberator <laughs> pistol, and then go and shoot up a school. Um, it's not practical for that either. Uh, so that's well, sort of uh, that's sort of that's sort of fear mongering. Um, <laughs> I mean, just just doing the just doing the math, going by the by the basic numbers. Well, a, a, a ghost gunner, a, the the ghost gunner machine that Cody sells, is what like sixteen hundred dollars. Seventeen right? eighteen hundred, yeah. So, so seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars plus you got to get the eighty percent lower. That's that's another one hundred fifty bucks. Uh, plus you got to get the rest of the the rest of the the firearm, right? So you're looking at four, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars depending on, on on the components that you use. So you're looking at like upwards of twenty five hundred, close to three grand, to to do a a ghost gun, if you were to use you know a ghost gunner, or or a three D if you were to get a three D printer and go that route, well. First, you got to get the 3D printer, and that's three, four, five hundred dollars. Plus, you got to get At the least, materials. Yeah. Plus, you got to get the the materials that are necessary, right? And then then you have to print them all out and put them all together, and and you're looking at what like a thousand dollars, eight nine hundred dollars, a thousand dollars on the upper end. Thereabouts, probably when yeah. You can get a Saturday night special in the street for what two fifty, three hundred bucks. <laughs> right. I mean, come on now, if 
there was a report, um, and I, I think it was I think it was either out of Chicago or New York. I don't remember, but it was it was five or six months ago, um, where they interviewed a bunch of people that were in prison, and they asked them how easy it was to get a firearm. Um, and and I think that the majority of what what it came out to be is like the the majority of them were one or two handshakes away from buying a firearm on the street. Yeah, that's, that's how e- that's how easy it is. That's how easy it is to get a firearm. Like nobody nobody that is realistically a criminal, right? That 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 has money on the mind is going to go through the process of building a ghost gun or Getting a 3D printer and, and, and building a firearm. Yeah. It's just, it's ec- economics of time, economics of money. It's just, there's there's no point in it. Right, right. But yeah, I mean, it's it's yeah, it's, it's just fear mongering. Uh, that's that's, that's yeah. all it is from, uh, from, from uh, you know, those who falsely yeah. imagine those to be our rulers and also the, uh, um, the the gun lobbyists, which they might as well be government agents, as far as I'm concerned. Um, mm. But uh, <laughs> the 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 gun grabbers, the gun grabbers, they they just they just filed a lawsuit in Texas to stop Cody Wilson from from posting, from from posting his stuff August August first. Well, it's it's I actually saw it's it's already been released on the Pirate Bay. So, I, it, I, they've, I think, been I think, out, they've I think been that out already. was strategic. Yeah, they've been out of they, like from from the from the first time it was posted, it was out. I mean. In in five day in five days, like when it was first posted, when the Liberator po- pistol was first posted, in five days it was downloaded a hundred thousand times. Right, right, yeah. You can't stop the signal; it's already out there. Yeah, yeah, and no, I was talking about like uh, like Defcad, uh, like those files. Uh-huh. Uh, they're they're already available on the Pirate Bay, um, somehow. Uh-huh. <laughs> so. Um, I mean, yeah, there's, there's, there's no way they can stop it. Uh, and it's, you know, they, they, and it, it's as, uh, I think I was talking to Kyle about this in the last episode, but I mean, when, when you look at, uh, you know, like, uh, like the, the Parkland kids and such and, and kind of the, the new sorts of, uh, the new like gun organization, anti-gun organizations, they came around at a bad time because there's nothing that they can do about this. <laughs> there's absolutely nothing they can do about it. So, um, I guess, uh, let's talk a little bit about the current technological status of 3D printing. So you mentioned, uh, like I, I've seen as on, on fascist book for, like three hundred and fifty, four hundred dollar three D printers, um, and so you know, feasibly, you know, th- it's a lot cheap. I guess the as far as you know, the, the personal uh, people having personal three D printers, um, that's coming around now, uh, which which is nice. Mm-hmm. But it's still, I'd say it's still pretty early on in the process. Um, what do you think? Where are we at well, te- uh, technologically? Uh, I think it's still early in the process. Also, um, there there are. We, we we have reached the point of technological advances three D through three D printing, where we can print things like AR fifteen lowers, right? There there's 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 no combustion in, in the lower of an AR fifteen. It's just it's just a, a, a housing for for the, the 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 safeties and the trigger and 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 the magazine. So there's no real threat there to to the structural integrity. Um, so that that's possible. You you can do that, uh, but with the the Liberator pistol, as 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 we mentioned earlier, Cody fired one shot and posted it. Uh, he's only fired it a half dozen times um, because of, of 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 the combustion and 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 the explosiveness and and all that. Um, until the 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 plastics un, un, until to, until the plastics and the rubbers and and the composites un, until those catch up. Um, and and have the ability to handle some of these uh, concussive forces from from an, an exploding round from the from the from the explosion that is, that is created by striking the fire pin and, and firing the round uh, until those catch up um, it, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be very limited and and until we get to the point where you can start actually like 3d printing aluminums you know a, aluminum right. powder aluminum powder that will that will be a, a huge revolutionary um in, in in terms of of self manufactured firearms yeah yeah exactly and, and it's it's a it's a great time to be alive but i'm also super excited mm-hmm. for the future it's it's kind of like with uh, with crypto anarchism uh, g- more generally mm-hmm. speaking when you look at cryptocurrencies and blockchain and whatever whatever the next iteration will be if it's de- uh, if it's uh, directed to cyclographs uh, dags or whatever um we're just at the beginning of a lot of a lot of this stuff, and we really don't know where it's where it's where it's going to go. Um, and you know, same with 3D printing. I I mean, once people can literally own the means of production, uh, commies, um, then um, 
then basic uh, then you know like that's that's going to be pretty huge i mean just as uh, as uh, you know cody's talked about kind of the the industrial manufacturing uh once people can 3d print whatever they need i mean that uh, you know kind of uh makes that industry a, a moot point to a large degree. So uh, I guess let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what you can actually do with a 3D printer now. And I, I talked about this whenever we did the direct action series over on Liberty Attack Radio. We did an episode on 3D printing. I talked about this, art, this article there too. Uh, but this was uh, back from uh, April 2014. Uh, it's a BBC article. Uh, the, the headline is uh, China, uh, China firm 3D prints 10 full-sized houses in a day. Um, so... A company in China has used great uh, giant 3D printers to make 10 full-size detached single-story houses in a day, it appears. Uh, Wensun used four 10-meter uh, by 6.6-meter printers to spray a mixture of cement and construction waste to build the walls. Layer by layer, official Xinhua News Agency reported, the cheap materials used during the printed process and the lack of manual labor means that each house can be printed for under $5,000, the 3D printer plan's website says. Um, so... I'd rec I'll put that in the uh, as a link uh, in the show notes on the actual uh, actu on the actual uh, episode. So check that Tuesday if you want a uh, link to this article, vonnypodcast.com forward slash fifty one. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, I guess it's at the point, uh, and this was back in twenty fourteen. Um, so I'm guessing, I'm not sure if they factored in the cost of the three D printers themselves because uh, what they say ten uh, uh, four ten meter by six point six meter printers. So um, I'm sure those were quite expensive. What do you think? Uh, I think that they were very expensive, um, but you only have to buy one and you can mass produce houses out of it. But yeah, it's uh, the, the the technology is starting to get there. One, I mean, as we, we, we've talked about before with, with things on, on the blockchain and, and decentralized networks, uh, the ideas are there. The, the, the ideas of creating these, these 3D printed objects Houses, firearms, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We'll get into more of that later. Um, the ideas are there. We just have to wait for technology to catch up. Yep. Uh, and 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 it is catching up. I mean, we went from 3D printing little stick figures, right? To well, they they just they 3D printed a house, man, a house. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> pretty huge. Yeah. Like I mean, it's it's come on now. It's 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 only it's only a matter of time before they start getting into to other materials and and whatnot and then it, it the sky is endless right just like with, with the blockchain um i don't i don't know I'll, I'll bring it up i guess but like we we talked about the other day like there's a, there's an assassination market yep on a decentralized assassination market like yeah on we talked about we yeah, yeah we, we we talked about this back in in december or january with yeah, the, january the and I, I talked about it two years ago yeah yeah uh -huh. on, on and, I said something to the effect of, oh, well, why doesn't this exist yet? And you said, well, technology has to catch up. Yep. It's, well, it's, it's it hard took, to be patient. <laughs> it, it, t it only took six months for technology to catch up. <laughs> well, two, two years and six months since the last time I talked well, two, about it. But yeah, yes. two years and six months since you talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. with that, just just as a quick as a quick side note, uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm pretty sure Augur is a decentralized app on the Ethereum blockchain. So uh, the privacy and anonymity concerns me, uh, at least to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I mean, just just uh, I guess it's it's sparking a conversation, which I'm really really happy about. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Like this this is the future, whether whether pe whether people like it or not. Uh, you know, your opinions on it, uh, they don't. They, I mean, they're, they're obviously some of them are valid and, and you know valid concerns and all, but uh, you know, technology is going to progress, whether or not uh, uh, you like the technology being developed. Much like the uh, the anti gun grabbers um, or the, yep. I guess the gun grabbers, how they they don't like the the whole idea of uh, 3D printing firearms, but that's where technology is going. You know, suck it up, Buttercup, and uh, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's where that's where it's going. <laughs> you can't so. stop. You can't stop the signal. So no, uh, no. Nope. But uh, um, I completely forgot where I was going to go with that. Oh yeah, I, uh, so I had some, I, guess I had some other point to, to to go. I guess into the future even. Um, just wait till the time when uh, I guess uh, when I guess uh, space I guess uh, space bound uh, self liberators can three D print their own space shuttles. Um, and then they can just get the hell off this planet altogether, and the governments become irrelevant. So I mean, there's yes. there's so many there's so many possible like looking into the future of technology. I mean, it, there's there's a lot of uh, incredible potential, uh, uh, you know, in, in the future and all. So I guess uh, to to move forward, uh, there's been 3D printed chocolate. Hershey actually had a, a 3D mm -hmm. printer, and they printed some chocolate. Uh, that's more of a minuscule sort of thing, but just figured I'd mention it. Um, now magazines. Let's talk about that a little bit. So um, the Feinstein mag, and I guess uh, you know other other uh, tip, other similar ones. Um, the 3D print. Ones. Do you, do you, th I, 
I know those. Uh, I I feel like those uh, could actually be pretty durable. Um, I've never used. I've never you know tested it out, so I don't know. Um, but uh, you know, as far as you know, three D printed plastic magazines uh, are those durable, quite durable. Uh, as as far as the the case itself and and the the follower that is inside the magazine, uh, yes, they 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 are pretty durable. They're not up to like like Magpul standards and whatnot, but they uh, they are they are pretty durable. But you still need the 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 metal springs inside, so don't freak out, gun grabbers. I mean, there's still you still won't go through a metal detector with it. Okay, well, that'd be an interesting. Yeah, that was another concern raised by Liberty Press. What if someone just sneaks this onto a plane? Well, there's metal parts in it, so um, that's not a concern uh, that needs to be addressed right now. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Plus, I mean, people people smuggle bombs on planes, so um, if I I, I mean. <laughs> Even even if that were the case, I mean, would, would they be able to find, would would they be able to detect it or, or find it or, or whatever? But um, so uh, the magazines that's an interest that's an interesting one uh, as well. Uh, consider if you look at like uh, Chicago, um, with uh, like especially the suburbs around it, um, a lot of them have come up with their own you know magazine limits and such. So if you can't buy those locally, um, then mm -hmm. and you can three D print a bunch of them, um, then I think that'd be a, a pretty pretty powerful thing. Yeah, here here in California, there's a, a ten round limit, uh, and I cannot buy legally. I cannot buy magazines that that hold more than ten rounds. Gotcha, gotcha. So so out in California, some some you know might be a uh, a beneficial thing over there, unless uh, yeah, you know. New York New York with the Safe Act. I mean, there's a seven rounds. So it's fucking crazy. Um, yeah. Okay, so then obviously uh, Liberator Pistol can be three D printed, but you still need the uh, the metal spring. And uh, you know, I was, I was looking at this before we before we started the you know started the live stream, but there are actually a bunch of uh, you know plastic houseware items that you can three D print. So like, uh, like like uh, I'm trying to remember some off the top of my head. I mean, just any of any of the knickknacks that might be uh, useful uh, around the mm -hmm. house. I mean, you can three D print those uh, you know easily. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not sure if that would be worth. They're they're yeah. they're three they're three D printing prosthetics for 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 okay. people. Yeah. Uh, they're they're three D printing casts casts for people's arms, right? Instead of having to use that that itchy ass, yeah, fiber material, right? They they can three D print a cast now. Um, the 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 technology it's it's leaping and bounding, you guys. I mean, it's it's not going to go away. It's it's yeah. absolutely not going to go away. Right, right. So so I guess the the last part in this section. Uh, let's talk about you know mobile three three uh, D printing for a uh, you know a Vanuan van nomad or a Vanuan minimal sailboater. Um, now, as far as the the dimensions of these these three D printers, I'm not sure, but obviously you know depending upon your needs and desires, you can uh, I guess convert your van or your sailboat however you want to, right? So if you want to make a dedicated space for uh, a three D printer. Uh, you could conceivably do that. So the the only thing that kind of was a concern for me was, you know, what's what about the energy usage, right? Um, you know, how much energy does it you does it does it take to actually print something? Obviously, it'll vary upon how long how long it'll take to print it, and um, you know some other variables uh, as well. But uh, I found a website, and you know this may not be a hundred percent accurate, but it's just I guess some initial information that we can probably develop upon. But um, <clears throat> So a three the replicator two three D printer, uh, fifty watts an hour or 0 0.05 kilowatts an hour for a one hour print, and I was looking at like the standard uh, Renogy uh, three <laughs> uh, the standard Renogy solar panel, and my calculations at that I'm not good at math I went to government schools, um, but uh, you know from my calculations using the the correct uh, I guess formula um, I came out with um, a point six. Uh, kilowatts per hour for a standard uh, 12 volt 50 amp hour battery I think it was so conceivably uh, if those numbers are correct you could you could um, use a, a 3d printer you know off solar uh, yeah um, average use of a 3d printer for an hour is 50 watts incandescent light bulbs have 60 watts an hour so it's literally less power usage than an incandescent light bulb Okay, so yeah, it's definitely okay. conceivable then. So, um, so yeah, on that note, I mean, I could see you know van nomads or minimal sailboat, or, especially if you're out like on the, out in the ocean and something breaks, you know, a plastic part breaks on your boat. Um, if you have a three D printer, you can just reprint that part. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's huge. Um, that is absolutely huge. Um, so replacement parts for whatever Vanu home base um, 
you know, 3D print firearms, uh, you know, a Liberator pistol or, uh, you know, down the road, maybe something, uh, you know, more uh, reliable. But, uh, I mean, there are a lot of potential for, uh, you know, mobile 3D printing for Venu and Van Nomad. And then also, too, I remember uh, listening to one of the Freedom Fiends episodes. Um, I think it was James Babb's kid, uh, you know, 3D printed, uh, you know, a bunch of knickknacks and was selling them. Uh, Venu, if Venu and Van Nomad could, you know, 3D print stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, that could be a, a little business. So um, that's certainly possible. Well, absolutely. I mean, you, you could 3D print everything from, like, a button for a shirt mm -hmm. up to up to limitless. You know, as, as you said earlier, they 3D printed a house. I mean, that, granted, that's a, a lot larger 3D printer, but, like, the home desktop printer, I mean, you could do anything from, from cups and, and bowls and 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 knickknacks and picture frames and uh yeah it's it really is it really is like limited by your imagination yeah yeah definitely definitely so um anything else on 3d printing right now or uh can we move on to uh to ghost gunning here uh, i'm excited for 3d printing i'm excited to see where it goes just as i am with with decentralized networks and, and the blockchain um and and again and again it as i just said um the possibilities of 3D printing, just as with the blockchain and, and cryptocurrencies, uh, it's it's limited by our imagination. Um, but somebody has to do it first. So if, if, if you have an idea, do it. Try it. Post it out there. Let other people see it. Just like with, with Cody Wilson. Cody Wilson, he might not have been the first, but he was the first one to get a lot of attention. Yeah, he, um, he was one of the first ones to not care about patents. Uh, apparently, yeah. so because uh, my intellectual property, yeah, fuck that stuff. Um, so yeah, <laughs> right. I'm just I'm just really excited to see where the, where this technology is going. Like, I'm, my 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 son is starting to get into it a little bit, so it's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting. Right on, right on. Good deal. And I guess we've already covered the main points of ghost gunning uh, that I have here in the outline. But um, yeah, as, as you said, the idea is to buy the 80% lowers, uh, basically, you know, blocks of metal with, with as you said, some some other uh, additions to it, some some alterations. And then uh, you just use the ghost gunner uh, to mill out the necessary, uh, I guess, the other elements to completely build the firearm. So um, I guess the, the question I have for you um, in regards to ghost gunning is, um, obviously, like uh, like with the with the ghost gunner itself, they say that you need no experience, you know, with CNC machining at all. Um, that you just you just download the the download the file, input it into um, you know the piece of software that's connected to the to the to the uh, ghost gunner. You hit print, or you 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 know you hit, you hit go, and then it's uh, you know mills out uh, mills out a hundred percent lower receiver. So I mean, what sort of expertise does this take, um, or or is that is that kind of it? There no no expertise necessary. <laughs> When it when it comes to a ghost gunner, the the the, the tabletop CNC machine CNC machine that Cody Wilson's company Defense Distributed sells, if you can use a microwave, you can use it. Right, it's it's liter it's literally pushing buttons. You, it it has all the the, the technology, the the plans are already uh, uploaded onto it, and you just you put it in there and and push the buttons. It's it's really it's really is that simple, but. Um, Anybody, anybody with any sort of mechanical aptitude um, can use things like drill presses and whatnot. Milli CNC, you don't need a CNC milling machine. You can use a simple drill press uh, and 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 some hand tools in order to complete a an 80% AR lower or or whatever 80% lower that you're using. Um, it's not difficult at all. It is it is absolutely not difficult. I will not acknowledge or deny that I have experience with it because I live in California, so fuck you very much. Go fuck yourself in SA guy. Um, but yes, it is it is it, it, all it takes is just some basic knowledge and, and some some really, really simple tools in or in order to do it. Or in, if you don't want to do it that way, this the the ghost gunner, the, the machine Cody Wilson sells, it's you're pushing buttons. That's it. I mean it's like it's it's as easy as a microwave. Right, right. So, so, so let's say, uh, you know, me with my limited mechanical aptitude skills, um, but let's say, you know, I, 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 you know, finish out the lower receiver, that's all good. Um, then I have to order a, uh, hypothetically, I'd hypothetically, I don't know if you're say hypothetically, I live in Texas now. Um, but, uh, so, so then I actually have to buy the parts to finish the, finish the gun. Um, so how difficult mm -hmm. is that, uh, you know, how difficult is it to actually complete the entire thing? 
Oh, it's so easy. It is so easy to <laughs> to build an actual to to complete. You know, once once you have the the eighty percent loader completed, once you have it all milled out, uh, it is literally plug and play. Like there, there's a reason they call ARs Legos for adults. <laughs> all right, it is it is it is super interchangeable. Uh, it has there, there's there's so many manufacturers out there for for parts. Uh, you don't even like. You can buy drop-in trigger kits, which is just like the trigger completely assembled, the trigger assembly, the, the the springs completely assembled, and you just you set it in the gun and then drive the pins on from the side, bam, right? You don't have to worry about springs flying anywhere and and all that good stuff. It is, it is, it is extremely easy to to mm -hmm. complete one of these one of these AR lowers or or Glock lowers or or 1911 lowers or AK lowers. They have AK lowers now too. It is extremely easy to complete one of these and, and turn it into a functioning firearm. So basically, with uh, with ghost gunning, with, uh, I guess, with DEFCAD, um, although obviously the, the plans have been out there for forever, you know, to, to, to make all these things. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, what, what this means is that, uh, as I've said before, the Second Amendment, or not the Second Amendment's dead, um, gun control, they, the gun control is dead. And, uh, you know, there's anyone you know anyone can manufacture you know the, their own means of self-defense and it's uh, apparently easy to do huh uh yeah the the gun control argument has been dead for a long time uh even even bef even be before 3d printing because you can still do you still got lathes and, and 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 hand tools and whatnot there's there's people turning in homemade shotguns at gun buyback programs here in california profit right <laughs> And that's that's what it's it's fifteen dollars in parts from Home Depot. Bam! You have a you have a quote homemade shotgun. You turn it in for a two hundred dollar gift card. I mean, yeah, it's 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 little it's it's like printing your own money. We don't need the Federal Reserve to do that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But, uh, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah, gun gun control gun control is a dead argument. The the only the only difference, the the only difference that that gun control makes. Is for quote law-abiding citizens, which I like to call willful slaves. Yeah, yeah, voluntary servitude. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. So, so I guess let's uh, you know speak more directly to this, and uh, um, I, I guess we kind of you know touch on it briefly a moment ago. But uh, uh, let's talk about the the legality of ghost gunning. Um, you know, so <laughs> since since you're more knowledgeable on this, uh, you know, overall legality, and then um, is there a certain point in the process? Where uh, gen I guess we'll go with well, fe federal law um, now. Is there some point in the process um, where you could violate, you know, federal law, uh, making your own firearm? Uh, there are certain standards that, that are set, like on 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 overall rifle length and and um, barrel length for for a rifle, um, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. There's there's certain like you you have to have a barrel that is over 16 inches. Um, if you're creating a, a rifle, uh, but you can create an AR pistol, which is technically a pistol um, because it doesn't have a standard stock and you can have a short barrel on that. Uh, but then you don't even need a standard stock because you can use one of these like arm braces, quote unquote arm braces. And ATF has said you can you can legally shoulder it, like put put the the sh the arm brace to your shoulder as you would a rifle uh, and that is completely legal huh. so it, it's kind of it's kind of a gray area but it's not really a gray area because it's legal but it's 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 in that realm of, of grayish area um, yeah I, I remember uh, there's one documentary I, I and I'll, I'll find a link to it and put it in the show notes again coming on Tuesday um, you guys just get to early access um, there was uh, one documentary I watched and this guy avid you know gun owner uh he had like 20 you know, a, bu a big box of magazines you know like six rifles a bunch of shotguns a bunch of pistols and he was showing like um you know if he takes off this part if he takes off this part and puts on another he didn't do it obviously like that would be a federal crime um if i you know take this off mm -hmm. and put it on that one um then that's yep. a federal crime too so I, I think what one 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 night i guess a uh, word of caution I'd, I'd give to venuans who are interested in this sort of thing uh probably would be wise uh you know um <laughs> Obviously, if you're a felon, uh, you know, felon in possession of firearm, that's a federal crime. That's uh, what uh, 
what Kevin Massey and also Robert Beecher. Robert Beecher only, uh, you know, po he posted a picture on Fascist Book, and uh, they came after him. Um, and then he ended up dying in prison. But, um, yeah, if you're a felon, obviously don't post any pictures of this stuff on social media. It's not smart. Um, I would, uh, I mean, just for, for me personally, for my own security culture, I wouldn't post pictures of firearms on Fascist Book anyways. Um, no. That's, that's no, especially, especially not with all those red flag laws going around. No. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Nope. So, so, so be, be wary about, uh, you know, posting these things in public. And uh, secondly, I'd, I'd say, you know, just, you know, really get, get really get up to get up to speed on, uh, you know, what's what is legal and, and, and what is uh, illegal, uh, especially if you're going to, uh, um, you know, it's legal exercises, right? Uh, we got money's based on reality, not legality, but at the same time, uh, to make ourselves more vulnerable to coercion, we've got to kind of know these things. So, uh, yeah, you know, do, just do some research and, and figure out what you can legally and illegally do and, and uh, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Well, the, the saying, uh, uh, you know, the, the nail that sticks out gets hammered. Well, if, if you're posting pictures of firearms and, and you're showing videos and, and you're talking about it all over the place, it's going to attract attention, right? I mean, it's, it's well known that whatever you do online is, is generally recorded and, and monitored and they got word farming programs and whatnot. So it's it's you got to practice you know op second per sec you know operational security personal security if 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 you're doing these type of firearms if you're doing 80 percent lowers if you're doing 3d printed firearms posting about it and talking about it yeah it it, it can draw attention so just yeah. just keep keep that in mind yes yes and so uh, i guess the, the the last thing i'll mention here and then we'll talk we'll talk specifically about uh, you know um, you know, 3D printing and ghost gunning, uh, you'll have uses for self-liberators and venuans. But uh, defcad.com, D-E-F-C-A-D.com, mm -hmm. go bookmark that page on August 1st. Uh, you know, go get uh, your external hard drives ready and, uh, you know, uh, uh, download away. Um, and also, too, you know, if you're playing around with this, uh, you know, uh, the open source, you know, j just as with cryptocurrencies and, and, and that sort of thing, like this is open source trying to build and, you know, modify and, you know, uh, make these things easier to use and more effective. So um, if you're someone who plays around with this sort of stuff, go and uh, uh, go on to DefCAD and, uh, you know, get involved there. Um, you know, that's, uh, you know, it's a public repository. Um, so yeah. that's that's what I'd recommend there. So uh, I guess uh, anything else? Uh, uh, what, one more point, one more point. If if you are going to do this sort of thing, and if, if you are, if you do want to do videos and you do want to put it out there, YouTube is cracking down. But full30.com, that's F U L L 30.com. It is a kind of a video library, YouTube ish, specifically for people into firearms. Yeah, and so, I've, 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 I heard that uh, uh, some of the uh, big gun channels on YouTube that were shut down, uh, apparently, uh -huh. apparently they found a home at Pornhub. So, at Pornhub, um, yes. <laughs> So yes. hey, if that's uh, that's, that's where you want to go, hey, more power to you, more power to you. So, <laughs> all right. So uses for self liberators and venuans. Uh, obviously, self defense. Um, <clears throat> that's just kind of the, uh, the the basic one, right? Uh, you know, venuans. You know, venuans. Just as you know, folks in the survival society who put themselves in vulnerable situations by living in large cities. Um, or I guess some of the uh, some of the crime rate large cities. You know, self defense is important to them, but self defense is important for venuans as well. Um, I'd also say that uh, another tool for this is if you're wilderness, uh, if you're pursuing wilderness fauna, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can you know build your own firearms and you can hunt with them. Um, and uh, obviously, them not being registered with the state, no background check, uh, that makes you more more invulnerable to coercion. So, um, as I said, uh, making replacement parts for a van, sailboat, or other venuan home base, uh, or other yeah other uh, Vanu home base. And um, another thing I kind of thought of, and I don't recommend this because it'd pr probably be illegal, I, I, I think. Um, but um, <laughs> so uh, ethical enclave sort of business. So in other words, an agorist business where you can uh, make firearms <laughs> and uh, uh, you, you sell uh, you know, firearms. Uh, I don't think I need to say much more on that. But, uh, you know, there is a potential business opportunity for the, uh, for the uh, entrepreneurial venuan. So... Um, uh, any anything so far, and then I've got one one final use case. But I'll turn it over to you for now. Uh, I just I, when, when you when you talk about self defense, um, I think self self defense is not only our right; it is our responsibility. Uh, the Supreme Court has ruled several times that police have no obligation to protect you, right? So so nobody nobody's coming to save you. You are your number one first responder. Uh, additionally, a, a, a cautionary tale: um, if you're going to 
get in, in, into and start using firearms, start, you know, especially with the 3D printed firearms. But if you're going to start using firearms, start carrying one, uh, learning how to use them. Also learn basic first aid. Right. I mean, the literally the, the life you saved may be your own. You know, that's that's it. That's an actual saying for a reason, guys. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um yeah, and I guess the kind of more the philosophical point. I mean, if, if you if you won't, if you aren't even willing to defend your own life, then mm-hmm. um, I mean that's <clears throat> I don't know. That just seems kind of backwards to me. Um, okay. Even okay, one more. Even Rayo, even Rayo talked about using a firearm. Even Rayo was pro firearm. He talked about it in in one of the books uh, where he talked about you know if if there's the, the blood coming into an area, you know having somebody there with a the firearm, you know to 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 de- de- to defend your camp and, and and to defend your safety and to defend your freedom. Uh, Rayo was pro firearm too, you guys. Mm-hmm. Yes, he was. He definitely was. Um, so this 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 last one, uh, something I thought of right before the show, and I think it's an interesting one. So there's this uh, there's this use case for for cryptocurrencies versus cash or um, you know that versus cash or uh, you know silver or gold or those sorts of things. Um, where if you have a wallet like Edge, where you can it's just a username and a password. Um, if you're going to be crossing the border, there's obviously very strict laws. I think if you're if you're carrying over ten thousand dollars, you have to report that. Um, well, you just delete your wallet when you're on one side. And then you re-download it on the other, and you just put in your new username, password, and your money is, uh, you know, back with you. Uh, so similarly, uh, with uh, ghost gunning and 3D printing, um, obviously there's uh, one one use of, or I guess the in my in my uh, opinion, the most efficacious use of Vanu is uh, mobility and nomadism. So, um, you know, going across various legal jurisdictions, I could see a use case. Uh, you know, if uh, Vanuin is in uh, Texas uh, for the winter or something. And, uh, you know, summer comes around and he's going to make a trip trip out to Northern California. Um, well, you know, what he could do is, uh, you know, go ahead and, uh, you know, get rid of, for money or some other way, uh, get rid of the firearm um, before he gets into uh, California. If he's got a ghost gunner and 3D printer, um, you know, once he gets out to his Vanu home base, maybe in the wilderness or uh, maybe once he gets his uh, van out in the Siskiyou National Forest, then he can just, you know, manufacture mm-hmm. his own firearm again and not have to worry about, you know, hauling that uh, across uh, state lines. So that's just I'll, one idea. I'll, I'll take that one step farther. You don't have to get rid of the entire firearm. All you have to get rid of is the is the lower that would have the uh, serial number on it. So you can keep right? all the parts. All you have to do is get rid of ah. that part. So you can keep all the parts because the parts are completely legal. The, the parts are just parts. They're not actually a gun. So all you have to do is get rid of that, that lower on the ARs or, or on the pistols or whatnot. Keep everything else. You can have all the ammunition. You can have all the magazines. You can have all the, the, the barrels and springs and, and, and all that other stuff. You just get rid of that lower, and then all you have is a box of parts. That's not a firearm. Right. And then you get and then when you get into Northern Cali, you just go to the local gun shop and, and pay some cash for some 80% lowers and, you know, walk off into the woods and do your thing. <laughs> right, so I guess you wouldn't you wouldn't even technically need um, the uh, the desktop ghost gunner. And again, I don't know the, I don't know the dimensions for that, or th- or even a three D printer. You just need mm-hmm. uh, you just need um, well, actually, yeah, you would need the yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, I got you. Okay, yeah. Well, you would need the ghost gunner to uh, to mill out the rest of the lower, but uh, yeah, I don't I don't yeah, it certainly seems feasible to me. And uh, you know, there there are a lot of ways to make yourself more invulnerable to coercion. It's you know as the the only limitations on Bonnie are, are is you know is is your uh, is your creativity. So you know, get creative. How how can I become more invulnerable to coercion? And uh, you know, you might come up with some good ideas uh, such as what we've discussed today. So, Jason, uh, any closing thoughts uh, for the listeners here? Um, uh, just just to to reiterate what I said a minute ago. Um, self defense self defense is is not only your right; it's your responsibility. Uh, Supreme Court has ruled several times. I think I think like ten different cases that the police have no obligation to protect you, right? Uh, additionally, that learn learn some basic first aid because mishaps do happen, especially with, with the, the infancy of 3D printing and firearms crack, they blow up, it, 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 it happens. Um, that is, that is it's it's part of the process, you guys. It, it happened for earlier with, with automobiles and, and firearms in the infant days. and So yeah, it happens. Um, other than that, I'm just I'm really excited. I'm really excited to see where this is going. As as we've talked about before with with blockchain, um, the the 
things that we're going to see in the future, like the, the, the things we see now are blowing our minds, but the things that we're going to see in the future are, are really, really, really going to be absolutely fantastic. And, and it takes, it takes people with, with innovation and imagination to, to, to take the first steps, right? As Cody, Cody wasn't the first one, but he was, he was the first one to really put it out there. Rail wasn't the first one practicing Vanu. You know, he wasn't the first one living in the wilderness. He wasn't the first one seeking freedom, but he was the first one to to really start putting it out there. Uh, same right. same with, with 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 blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin wasn't the first one, but it was the first big one. It was the first one really out there. Um, and it was it was the the first effective one because uh, Satoshi found a way to uh, handle the decentralization and, and consensus uh -huh. and all of that. There were other digital cash. There was other implement implementation of digital cash, but since they were centralized, all it took was mm -hmm. uh, you know state to you know n you know knock on the door uh, and uh, you know those were shut yeah, down. So yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm I'm excited for the future, man. It's it's going to be absolutely fascinating. Like like an anarchist anarchist in the next few years are, are going to create some just absolutely fantastic technologies and, and like there's, there's no way the state is going to survive this man. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. And even, even if the state does survive, we've got, uh, we've got the tools to, uh, to build our second mm -hmm. realms, to build our body, many cultures and, yep. and, uh, and those, those, those sorts of things. But yeah, so this I is our, I can't wait until I'm using Vanu coin to buy the plans for a 3d printed RPG. <laughs> God damn it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a pretty pretty incredible feat. Yeah, pretty incredible. <laughs> so, I mean, it, this is our eighth installment of the Crypto Anarchism series, guys. If you've been sleeping on Crypto Anarchism, haven't been looking into it much. I mean, you're on you're on DLive. Um for you guys on DLive or or I guess uh, you know, uh, you know, using uh, I guess one aspect of that. Uh, but for those uh, you know on the normal podcast feed, if uh, you haven't been uh, you know utilizing any Crypto Anarchism stuff or been looking into it, you are missing out. This is the forefront of self-liberation. Um when people think Crypto Anarchism a lot of times it's you know just digital sort of stuff. But crypto anarchism also comes into play with with pretty much any technology, um, 3D printing, ghost gunning, all of that. So um, if, you, if this is your first time listening, go uh, check out the rest of the crypto anarchism series. And obviously, I'd recommend starting at episode one and just listening all the way through, as uh, most uh, most people do, uh, which is the, the which is the right way to do it. Um, so there's a very interesting philosophy behind Vanu, and that's what we covered in season one. So um, yeah, crypto anarchism is absolutely important, and uh, the future looks uh, looks really, really bright. Uh, as I said before, I don't see the abolition of the state in my lifetime, but uh, technology will uh, enable us Venuans to uh, be free in the here and now, and uh, that's what's important. Mm -hmm. So, Jason, anything else, man? I can't wait till August 1st. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Defcad.com, yeah. D-E-F-C-A-D.com. -E yep. Very good. So that's all we have for you. Keep in mind, my book, Vanu, A Strategy for Self-Liberation, is available for pre-order. Just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu book to receive your copy or to reserve your copy uh, today. You can also become a subscriber on Patreon and get early digital access to my book, in addition to exclusive episodes not released on the main podcast feed. Just visit patreon.com forward slash Vanu. And a lot of content is out there. I just put out the uh, third edition of the Vanu uh, email newsletter uh, yesterday. So there's that, a bunch of exclusive episodes. Uh, my book, you can read that right now. Uh, again, patreon.com forward slash Vanu. Lots of great stuff going up there. Uh, so next week, we'll cover the Internet Invisibility Project, and uh, then I think we'll be ready to close out this extensive crypto anarchism series. Uh, if you have any ideas on subjects we uh, may have missed, please do reach out, uh, shane at vanupodcast.com, or just message uh, me or the TVP uh, Facebook page, or if you want to reach out to Jason, I know he'd love to hear from you too. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, thanks, guys. Uh, we'll talk soon. Peace.